the sunset. Yoga Express, your virtual stretch clinic that helps you move the body to still the mind. My name is Banu Suresh, I'm your host for this program, and today we have once again our amazing crew and the same cast that you saw, I'm sorry, in the last three or four days, everyone is totally converted into yoga addicts. Some of them are crewing for us and some of us are stretching right here, but I think we're all so much into our practice. We want all of you to join us here today. To my extreme right, we have Ron Thomas. Ron is a producer here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network where we film our episodes for Yoga Express. Ron, welcome back to the show. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. And Ron totally loves this program, so he's getting a lot out of it in spite of all the ouch and <laughs> oohs that we hear every now and then. But I know you like it, Ron, so we like having you here, so welcome back. Thank you. Indra Dudna to Ron's left and to my immediate right. Indra, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having sleep me. Sleep well yesterday? Yes, I sleep, Did slept like a baby. I always Again. sleep like a baby, you know, after doing good. yoga. Good. Um, you know, we live in New York and you always like running to go to everywhere. You're so busy. Right. I, I'm an actress and so I'm running, running over everyone to go to that audition. Even the office, I'm running to go to the office and, uh, and, and yoga helps me to relax. Right. Forget it all, forget you in New York, just right. relax. Just keep keep doing what you're doing, just don't have to rush there, right? I know. It'll take <laughs> you, you'll, you'll get everything will come to you, but you're it still... It helps you relax, relax at night, sleep yeah. better, you're just a different person. That's true. Slow it down. That's true. And we become so much more aware of the way we mm -hmm. do everything. We sit upright. I noticed mm -hmm. when I first started practicing, Michelle, I was actually sitting more upright, I was more aware of myself. Mm -hmm. yes. Now I'm trying, I'm yes. hoping that you know, I'll still continue to stay okay, that my posture will continue to stay uh, good. But there are times you know, when you're scrunched up over the computer, you just go all the way forward right. and suddenly you want to sh open up your shoulders, you want mm -hmm. to feel good. Michelle Lorelli is a yoga teacher in training. Michelle, how did you feel? Yes, I think you were very comfortable, but tell us anything you want to share with us. I just I just love the um, the whole aspect of the yoga practice in general. Right, right. Um, I like being able to, to spread the word out there. I don't want people to fear it. They right. Should, um, right. We talked about you, fear too. Yeah. You should never um, look at you know someone in the mat over and say oh they're bending that far. Right. You you do what you do for that day and you know each day. That brings to mind what Talisa pointed out yesterday. Some schools have mirrors mm -hmm. and sometimes mirrors are good for alignment. And you were talking about fear yesterday too, Anya. Sometimes mirrors are good to know that you're getting into the posture, uh, you know, how deep you're getting in, mm -hmm. how far you have to go. But I think also the vanity takes over. So yes. yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't want that. Having uh, Talking about vanity and getting possessive about our personal space, there is one thing that I am possessive about, <laughs> my little yoga mat right here. <laughs> I don't let anyone get on there. But welcome back to the show, Thank Michelle. Thank you for having me. nice to have you. One of these days we should have you lead a class here. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Whenever you finish your teacher training, let Great. us know. Thank you. Anya Mikutskaya. Hi. Anya, welcome back to the show. It's always a pleasure to watch you stretch as well. So, anything else you want to share with us? I want to share that I'm very thankful for you too for yesterday's stretches. You feel I, better, right? I feel better and I learned a lot. Good. I Good. learned a lot how to deal with. We all have, we all have different things yes. to. Yes. We have different needs. Work yeah. on. Yeah. Exactly. We all have different, different, different. Bodies. And you slept well too. <laughs> Two babies here. <laughs> uh, so well, it, so. it'll get better. The more forward folds you do, because I think what's happening is we're carrying all our tension in the base of our neck, 
So you want to feel some of that part also stretch a little bit. That's where we carry all our worries. You know how we sit on the computer all day and the more yeah, yeah. scrunch up? <laughs> so you really want to stretch that part. So you want to do, you and know, And the legs that I've learned, this also. Right, too. right, that's right. It feels good, right? When you it do that? feels very relaxing. Very relaxing, that's right. So yeah, keep coming, keep stretching with us. It's mm. always it's nice wonderful. to have your faces. I'm so I like happy. exercising. Good. I'm so happy you're back it's with like us. It's like you're giving a gift to yourself. You're giving a gift to your body. Right. Right. I think we're all supercharged. And it's like you. a manifesting a desire to be healthy. To stay healthy, to hold yes. on to the good health we already have. That's right. That brings to mind what, uh, Talisa, you said this in several episodes before also, but you always bring that spiritual note to it too. You talk about different people. The truth of the matter, like yoga, no matter if you're not um, spiritual or trying to be spiritual, you, it really just comes together in yoga. Right. Because I had a teacher, he used to tell me all the time that, you know, in the beginning we would make noise. It's not because we make this because of the OM, but we make noise to get your body prepared to scare all that negative out to prepare right. for what is to come. So he would say, you know, as you keep doing yoga, you learn that you start to awaken yourself. You started to awaken your chakras and start to open up your third eye. Right. Everything starts to come to be. You notice more things. You more, notice people's orals more. You notice certain aspects of things that you was not aware of before. Right. I'm not. I'm just a student still. Right. I'm still learning right. every day. So. so you're talking about chakras. That's yeah, that interesting that you bring that up. I'm talking about OM. So. Remind me, I've got two Those things. Two, to everything comes together. I don't care what, even doing like different types of hot yogas and stuff like that. Right. You're still, are you still opening yourself up? You yes. still allowing that certain that certain higher presence come in because you are doing yoga on your mat. You're not supposed to really share your mat with. And no we one were else. wondering where the soul part came in. There you go. <laughs> But you're right, talking about the higher self. Yeah. Also, the other thing that all of us here seem to have discovered together is talking about the chakras in very simple terms. We like to think of the human body like a battery, battery that's been totally depleted of energy. So the chakra, if you remember from previous episodes, the seven main chakras, the major chakras are located between the hip, hips and the shoulders. And of course, there are two, one in the middle, uh, middle of the eyebrows and the top, but the five main ones out of the seven are located between the hips and the shoulders. And the reason for that, that's where all our major glands and organs are. If you talk the extremities. And don't that's have why pigeon hurts so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Okay, that's we need to talk getting, about that. Pigeon hurts yeah, so, bad. so we think of our body as batteries. So what we're doing is when the chakras, when the more we stretch, the more we practice, the energy, the battery energy starts filling up. So when we've practiced so much, we're talking about reaching Sahasrara Chakra, mm -hmm. the energy going right to the top of the head, that's really hard to achieve. I don't know, I don't know anyone who has achieved that state yet, but when we go into meditative uh, situations, when we try to meditate, that's what we're aiming for. So you're filling up the body, we want to feel good in body, so we are ready to reach the soul ready to get to spiritual levels. But yeah, tell me, why, what is the uh, pigeon Hurt bad? You talking about it? Well, in the beginning when I used to do yoga, it was, it was so stressful because I started doing it because I was um, to alleviate the stress in my life. Ah, okay. And so you have it here in your in your hips. Mm -hmm. So especially when we did frog, or right? Boy, right. I can go there because I'm open, but it was just still very and challenging to hold those positions. Well, we hold, yeah, we're holding our tensions yeah, in different you hold parts the of our body. There. Right. Like people right. don't realize that even when you put your leg forward and you hold it forward like this and you're standing up, right. it's going to hurt because I don't know why you, you're engaging this muscle here and you're going to feel that tension. Right. You and really, but stressing. when we're doing those kind of stretches, we're really supposed to engage low All abdominal muscles. Yes, yeah, but it's strengthening everything too. Every so part of our body. I'd also like to thank our amazing crew today once more. Ivano got by on camera. Thank you so much, Ivano. Drew Taylor, our facilitator for today again. Thank you for these amazing gobos and the lights behind us and the sound system. Thanks, Drew. We have Jabari Osaze, our director for today, and in many episodes before as well. Josie and Hurd, our tech crew. We have George Sotrelis. Thank you so much to all of you for making this episode come together. And Ali Narayan Swami. Ali, I haven't forgotten you. We're going to take our viewers today through a very simple sequence called the sun salutation. If we sit any longer, I think our oh, feet are going to freeze. <laughs> We're all going to stand up, take you through a very simple sun salutation sequence. 
which actually includes one additional stretch in addition to the traditional uh, postures and sun salutation. We have what we like to call the Yoga Express Twist because what we found out, the obliques were the only part of the body in the sun salutation that are not addressed. So, let's get our heels together, toes slightly apart, maybe I'll come forward. Then we'll stagger ourselves in from it. Yeah, just that's it, good. Bring your palms in front of your chest. Elbows are raised. Inhale, take your arms all the way up. Tilt your pelvis forward, wiggle your biceps back. Exhale, fold from the hip. This is Hastotana. Fold into Pada Hasta. Hands to feet. Place your palms about six to eight inches in front of your feet. Take the left leg back and then the right leg goes back. Exhale. Bring your heels down all the way to the floor. If your heels do not touch the floor today, it's okay. Use a brick or a block. Use anything that will help you make the connection. Once you've made the connection, dip your head between your biceps and keep exhaling. I may need to take my feet further back. Inhale, bring your right foot forward. Ashwa Sanchala. Now, we just came out of downward dog. Adho Mukha Shwanasana. Place your left knee on the floor. Uncurl your toes on the left foot. This is Ashwa Sanjala, Ashwini or horse. Inhale the left arm up. Now we're gonna take you through the Yoga Express twist. Exhale, dip your left elbow over your right knee. Place your right palm on top of the left and look up at the raised elbow. Parsva Kona Namaskara. Parsva is intense, Kona is corner or a triangle. It's really corner in this posture. Namaskara is prayer, intense prayer twist. Inhale, let's come out of that. Place your hands beside the right foot. Curl your toes in in the left foot. Lift your left knee up. Take your right foot to, uh, um, to meet the left. Both your feet are in the back. So we are in dandas, and danda or plank. You don't want to keep your buttocks too high and not too low. If you're too low, you'll hurt your back. If you're too high, you're not going to strengthen your back enough. Hold it. Very gently, knees, chest and chin to the floor. Exhale, dip your chest and chin. Inhale, come up in cobra. Inhale, glide out into cobra. While we're in cobra position, I'd like to point out, as we exhale, that posture is called Ashtanga Namaskara. Ashta Anga, eight limbs. We were talking about Ashtanga earlier. That's another one aspect of yoga as well. But in this posture, the eight limbs that make contact with the floor are the two feet, the two hands, chin, chest, and the two knees. Now we are in Bhujang or Cobra. Inhale, lift your torso up, lift your chest and chin up. Engage your low back muscles. Press with the tops of your feet to strengthen your back. You might want to test your back. Take your palms off of the floor. Keep your elbows close to you, place your palms back, curl your toes in, let's come up in mountain position, forehead to the ground, inhale, let's come up all the way, exhale, in mountain position, <clears throat> very gently we are going to bring the left leg between the hands and then the right leg and then we'll move on to the other side in just a moment. Inhale, bring the left foot between the hands and then the right. Place your palms together. Keep your back nice and straight. Inhale, let's come up. Hastottana. Exhale, Namaskaras and palms in front of your chest. Now, if I forget the other side, I'm going to get a wrap on the wrist from Indra. So we're yeah. going to go and <laughs> stretch on the other side. Keep your palms where they are. Inhale, take your arms all the way overhead. Exhale, fold from the hip. Place your palms six to eight inches in front of your feet. This time take the right leg back and then the left leg in mountain position. Keep exhaling and dip your head between your biceps. Try to press your heels down to the floor and keep breathing, keep exhaling. Use abdominal breath, engage your low abdominal muscles to breathe in this posture, keep exhaling. This time we're going to bring our left foot between the hands. So let's bring our left foot between the hands. Place your right knee on the floor. Uncurl your toes in the right foot and let's ease off just a little bit. Ashwa Sancha, the left knee is up. Inhale, the right arm up. 
Exhale, dip your right elbow over the left knee. Place your left palm on top of your right. Look up at the raised elbow and hold. You should feel a wonderful stretch in your obliques on the right side this time and a beautiful compression on the left side. Inhale, place your palms beside your left foot. Curl your toes in in the right foot. Take your right knee off of the mat. Take the left foot to meet the right. And let's hold in plank position. Engage your low back muscles. You want to keep your back nice and strong. Very gently, knees, chest and chin to the ground. Exhale and dip. Ashtanga Namaskara. Inhale. Let's come up into Cobra. Uncurl your toes. Press with the tops of your feet. Keep inhaling. Take your palms off of the floor and hold. Palms back on the floor. Curl your toes in. Inhale, forehead to the ground. Inhale, lift your buttocks all the way up. <coughs> Hold it, keep exhaling. Inhale, bring your right foot forward and then the left between your hands. Palms are together. Keep inhaling, come up with a nice straight back. Exhale and release. We did two half rounds of the sun salutation. Typically when you do the sun salutation at home, it should really only take us 60 seconds, right? Michelle, isn't that what we say? We talk about the 12 vayu fields, the ether fields, so it's five seconds. So you're looking at kind of a sun salutation clock. You do 12 postures in um, 30 seconds on one side, 30 seconds on the other. When you do about three or four rounds of sun salutation, we're all supercharged already, our batteries. We're all burning up on the inside, right? Okay, what we're going to do is take you through some more forward folds. I'm not sure how much time we have. I think we may have at least five, right, uh, Ivana? Ten. Beautiful. We're going to do some forward folds. We did one round of sun salutation. Now we're going to take you through some <coughs> forward folds, actually for constipation. So there'll be more of a compression of the lower abdomen on the upper thigh. Some of them we may have done in the past episodes. There may be a few repeats, but we want to take you through anyway. Palms in front of your chest. Inhale, take your arms all the way overhead. Exhale, fold from the hip. This time our holding time will be a little longer because what we're doing is we, besides getting a wonderful stretch of the spinal extensors in the back of the body, we're getting a beautiful compression of the lower abdomen on the upper thigh. So hold it right there. <coughs> Place your palms together. Let's inhale and come up. Exhale and release. Let's all turn to face the front left of the mat. <coughs> Bring your legs out this time. Veera Bhadra, the brave warrior. Oh, no, actually we'll do the triangle and then transition into brave warrior. We're going to do three postures one after the other. Bring your legs out about three feet apart. Put your brakes on first. Make sure your feet are nice and secure on the mat and then turn the right foot out. <coughs> Inhale your arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Now exhale, dip the right hand in front of the right ankle. Take the left arm all the way up. So this time we're getting a compression of the lower abdomen on the right side on the upper right thigh. Look up to face the extended arm. Inhale, let's come up. Keep your palms at shoulder height. Now exhale, bend the right knee. Keep exhaling, dip your right hand in front of your right ankle. Left arm goes all the way up. Challenge yourself, take your left arm all the way overhead, palm faces down. Look up at your biceps, so biceps or triceps, whatever's facing us right here. <laughs> Inhale, let's come up, bring your arms to shoulder height, straighten your right knee, turn your right foot in, turn the left foot out. This time we're going to look away. Keep your arms up there, Indra, I can see you from the back of my head. <laughs> it's a good test of our <laughs> triceps strength. Now turn left, turn to look at the left tip of the fingers on the left hand. Lean a little bit to the left side, exhale, dip your torso, dip your left arm in front of your left ankle, take your right arm all the way up. Hold it right there. Inhale, let's come up. We're gonna transition into the next posture, Veera Bhadra, Brave Warrior, exhale, and bend the left leg at the knee. 
keep exhaling, dip your left hand in front of your left ankle, right arm again goes all the way up. And then challenge yourself, take your right arm all the way overhead. This time you'd feel a beautiful compression of the lower abdomen on the upper left thigh. So the left side of the lower abdomen, upper left thigh. Inhale, let's come up. Straighten your left knee, turn your left foot in. Now bring your arms down. <laughs> Wiggle your feet closer. Let's turn to face the camera. <clears throat> We're gonna take you through different aspects. We did a few forward folds, some of them we've taken you through two or three days back. We also wanted to do some stretches with the back of the legs. This one is pretty intense, so let's, now let's do a few different ones. Call the Uttita Pada. Uttita Pada is raised foot. Uttita is raised. It also does involve a little bit of balance, so you may want to look at a point that doesn't move. Shift your weight to the left leg. Place your left hand on your left hip for balance. We're going to hold on to the right big toe from the inside, so inhale. Lift your right foot, hold on to the right big toe with your right hand, that's it. Left hand is on the left hip for balance, keep inhaling, take your right leg all the way out. Now if you're very comfortable in this posture, you may want to take, I'm going to stagger back, you may want to take your leg out to the side. And feel free to do what Ron is doing, if you need to use a chair today, that's fine. I'm going to try, inhale, bring your leg forward if you're on the side, exhale and relax. Bring the right foot down. Transfer your weight to the right leg. Place your right hand on your right hip. Hold on to your left big toe from the inside with the left hand. Look at a point that doesn't move. I'm going to try and look at the mic. Maybe that's too close. Oh well, give it a shot. Keep inhaling. Extend your right leg out in front of you. You want to feel a bit of a compression of your lower abdomen on the left side on the upper front of the upper left thigh. And then if you want to go sideways, that's nice, Michelle. I'm going to see if I can take it side. <coughs> Don't give up, Ron. Keep trying. Just bring your leg out in front of you. You're doing fine. Uh, Inhale. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. <laughs> Exhale and relax. You just have to keep trying. Every day it gets better and becomes more fun, too. Ow. <laughs> We're going to take, up, uh, take our viewers through three postures in transition, one after the other. Heels are together, toes slightly apart, <coughs> palms in front of your chest. Uttanasan from Uttan, Uttan is ragdoll or forward fold. From Uttan, we'll go into downward dog and then go into Asha Sanjala equestrian. Inhale, take your arms all the way up. Now, this time you want to cross and hold on to the opposite elbows. Keep your back nice and straight, wiggle your biceps behind your ears, keep your chest open, tilt your pelvis forward, exhale, and fold. Feel a wonderful compression of the lower abdomen on the front of your upper thighs. These postures are great for massaging your large intestine, great for helping prevent constipation. We don't promise any miracles. You do not pull jumbos with your teeth in yoga. The idea is just to do the best we can, make the most of our body. Place your palms on the floor, about 16 to 18 inches in front of your feet. Take your right leg back, and then take the left leg back. Abho Mukha Shwanasana, Downward Facing Dog. So once you're comfortable bringing your heels down, you might want to dip, dip your head between your hands, between your biceps. Keep exhaling. <coughs> Very gently inhale, bring the right foot forward between your hands. Place your left knee on the floor. Uncurl your toes in the left foot. Let's ease off just a little bit. Now in this one, you want to feel the compression. So what we're going to do is exhale and dip the hip. Keep exhaling and dip. Now to get a little more out of this, to get a little more of an abdominal compression, we're going to do a bit of a twist. Inhale the left arm up. Exhale, bend. Dip the left elbow over the right knee. Place the right palm on top of the left. Parsvakona Namaskara. And hold it. You should feel a wonderful compacting of the midriff right there. That's actually every time we do a twist. We talked about this in previous episodes. Every time we twist ourselves, twist our torso, we're sort of bringing our body in opposite directions. We're depriving the organs, glands and organs in that region 
of blood and oxygen for just a few seconds and when we un untangle ourselves, when we untwist ourselves, fresh blood rushes in. Let's ease off and let's switch legs. We transition the other two postures, so bring your right knee back, bring your left foot forward. Keep exhaling, uncurl your toes on the right foot, exhale and dip. Feel the compression of the lower abdomen on the left side, on your upper left thigh. Inhale the right arm up, exhale, dip your right elbow over the left knee. Place your left palm on top of the right palm and look up at your raised elbow. Parswa Kona Namaskara. We're talking about fresh blood rushing in. That's when you also, fresh blood carries fresh oxygen. That's when you feel all that high energy in your body because all your organs and glands are totally refreshed. Inhale. Let's come out of that. We have probably about, what, three minutes? Perfect, two minutes, okay. Let's do a little bit of a cobbler position. Actually, that's a nice one. That's a nice one to fold over. Let's do that, the rabbit position. Let's start with that and then move into cobbler. Sit on your heels, bring your knees close. Well, <laughs> bring, uh, take your arms all the way up. I know I should have really taken arms gradually, right? Exhale, fold from the hip. This is a wonderful close to some of the twists. Shashankasan. Inhale, let's come up. Let's get into Baddha Kona, cobbler position, which when we fold over is a beautiful compression and then we're gonna to go to your favorite posture, Talisa, the malas and the squat. So place your feet, the soles of your feet facing each other and bring them close. So the, the soles of your feet touch each other, hold on to your feet with both hands and then press your knees down. In this posture, you may want to sit on something that helps bring your torso up. We have the titles coming up, so this is a great closing. Push your knees down with your elbows if you need to. Exhale and fold. On behalf of our director, let's stay right here. On behalf of our director, Jabari Osase, we have our tech crew, Josie and her, George Zotrelis, and Ivan Hogard Pai. And on behalf of our participants here, we have Ron Thomas, Indra Dudnath, uh, Michelle Lorelli. <laughs> Every time I fold over, <laughs> I forget everyone's names. Michelle Lorelli, Anya Ma uh, Mikutskaya, and Talisa Michella. And thank you, Drew. On behalf of all of us, this is Banu Suresh signing off. You are watching Yoga Express. Inhale, let's come up. Ooh, we'll close with the squat. I know, I would like to close with that, right? <laughs> but they're still rolling, we can keep stretching. Let's close with a squat. Let's come up and squat, bring your feet out, heels are closer than the toes, place your...